Praise the Lord. Greetings everyone, praying everyone as well. Before the start of the service, I want to introduce you to this week's Parish of the Week video for St. Matthew's Church. Let's sit back and watch. For over a century, St. Matthew's Church has been a clarion call of God, much like a ringing church bell calling the community to worship. Founded in 1902 as a humble Cantonese congregation, we shared our early days at Stamford Road with St. Peter's Church. In 1929, we found a home in Neil Road, where St. Matthew's Church was officially established. By 1958, we proudly attained parish status, marking a significant milestone in our journey of faith. With a heart for the community, we opened St. Matthew's Kindergarten in the 1950s to serve the families near Chinatown. Our commitment to education deepened in 1956 when we co-founded Anglican High School. It was the only Chinese medium mission school within the Diocese of Singapore. In 1996, as the government acquired our Neil Road site, we relocated to Tiong Bahru, where we continue to flourish. By God's grace, we celebrated 120 years of ministry in 2022, renewing our mission to embody the vibrancy of our beginnings. Today, our church undergoes renewal, just like our immediate vicinity in Tiong Bahru. Like a resonant toll of a bell, the influence of St. Matthew's Church echoes far beyond our walls. Since 2020, our outreach at Anglican Senior Centre Havelock has brought much joy and companionship to the elderly through active ageing activities. Monthly engagements with a nursing home and community club allow us to bring festive cheer and meaningful connections to the residents. With our mission to make every member a disciple of Christ, we encourage participation in cell groups and faith-building courses. The Alpha Course remains a cornerstone, inviting those seeking life's mission to explore the Christian faith. We aim to build an intergenerational church where all ages worship and serve together fostering strong relationships within and beyond our congregation, blossoming through shared interests like gardening and music. It is our prayer that St. Matthew's Church continues to be transformed from glory to glory, faithfully serving the ever-evolving needs of our vibrant community. We strive to be steadfast in our mission. St. Matthew's Church has been grouped with Church of Our Savior, my Saviour's Church, Church of the Good Shepherd, and St. Andrew's City Church under Area Group 2 of the Diocese of Singapore. Area Group 2 is one of the seven area groups within the Diocese of Singapore with a total of 27 local parishes. Once again, a very good morning, St. Paul's Church. Dear beloved in Christ, it's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. As we gather this morning in the presence of Almighty God and the whole company of heaven, let us lift our hearts in worship, praise and thanksgiving. We come together not only to celebrate God's love, but to also reflect on His grace and mercy. Shall we pray? Let's bow in prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts as we enter this time of worship. 
We ask for your help in focusing our minds and hearts solely on you. We know that our thoughts can easily wander to the worries of the week and concerns for others. But we pray that your Spirit will guide us to set these aside and center ourselves on your glory. We're reminded in Psalms 95 verse 6, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Help us to bow our hearts in reverence. And let our worship be sincere and undistracted. May our singing, listening to your word, and fellowship with one another bring honor to your holy name. We thank you for this opportunity to worship as a family of faith. May your presence fill this place this morning and inspire us to live out. You love in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And there's a summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Altogether, Amen. Let have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. We may kneel or sit. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. It may take this time to reflect and search our hearts as we even pray this together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive God's grace and His forgiveness. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us arise as God's forgiven people and say the Gloria in Excelsis together. Together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Vive the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. This morning, Joe and his team will lead us through in the praise and adoration. Good morning, church. All right. 
Let's come together and proclaim, Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear because I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so good. Yes, you are. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear, because I'm here in your presence. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. You're giving me eternal life. You're giving me eternal life. Word to light my way, you've given me your spirit. With mercies every day, Jesus, you are so good. Yes, you are. Jesus, you are so good. Who is it? to fear, because I'm here in your presence. Lord, we are. Jesus, you are so good. Jesus, you are so, so good. I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. You've given me confidence. You've given me confidence. And my soul is filled with peace. For you are my provider. You supply my every need. Jesus, you are so good. Yes, you are, Jesus. Jesus, you are so good. There's nothing to fear. Cause I'm here in your presence Jesus, you are so good Jesus, you are so, so good And I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart I just want to thank you And I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart I just want to thank you I just want to thank you with every beat of my heart. Hallelujah, Lord. Just want to thank you, God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together. To lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering. As your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with you lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. Oh, Your name. 
says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of man Jesus you are the son of God our Messiah the Lamb, the Roaring Lion, the Alpha and the Omega, our one true God, our risen Saviour. Let us all behold Him. He who was before there was light Walked across the pages of time He who made everything living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Behold Him Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Roaring Lion, oh, be still and behold Him. He who He rose to life Behold Him Jesus Son of God Messiah The Lamb The roaring lion Oh be still And behold Him Jesus Alpha and Omega God the risen Savior, oh, be still and be Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Whoa. 
Jesus, Alpha and Omega, our God, the risen Savior, hold this, hold him. Let us together, the collect, the fourth Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil, and make us the sons of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This Sunday, we will also do the Collect for the Missions Month. We'll see together. O oh God, you have made of one blood of all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. It's the first reading. We brought by Sister Rita. The first reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 20 to 28. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for God has put all his subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted to put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, and beginning at verse 14. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew chapter 24, verses 14 to 28. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world has a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down to take what is in his house and let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. 
And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation such as not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Would you please be seated? Today uh, marks the beginning of uh, Missions Month. Uh, every November, we set aside uh, four Sundays uh, to focus on the Great Commission and the call to proclaim the gospel to all the nations. St. Paul's Church is one of 27 parishes in the Diocese of Singapore. And we are one diocese in seven countries, Singapore and six uh, deanery uh, countries where we are doing missions. Uh, and so the countries are Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, and Nepal. And uh, there's a short uh, video clip that will be shown now to give you uh, an overview of this vast harvest field uh, that the Lord has entrusted uh, to our diocese. So we'll play the short video clip now. Matthew 28, 19-20 says, <clears throat> Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. <clears throat> Southeast Asia is one such region where we can fulfill the Great Commission. It's a melting pot of cultures and traditions. The good news is that the pasture is ripe for us to work in. Christianity is not the dominant religion in these countries, but there is a growing need for Christ-centered work. The Diocese of Singapore has six mission deaneries in six different countries. Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Nepal, Thailand, and Vietnam. Each of these deaneries has the potential to become their own diocese. The Diocese of Singapore functions as a nexus, connecting these countries with resources, spiritual cover, and guidance. The opportunities to minister are bountiful from education to vocational empowerment and church planting. Working amongst the locals will allow you to experience God's love and witness God's hand in these communities. As Luke 10.2 reminds us, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We pray that the Lord will send us fellow workers to aid us in His work and harvest. The Diocese of Singapore welcomes you to join us in our mission to fulfill the Great Commission. With your efforts, we believe that the communities will be blessed. Partner with us to see how God works within the deaneries and blesses lives one by one.
So we praise God for the work uh, in the six uh, deanery countries. And uh, the, truly, as the video shows, the harvest is plentiful, uh, but the laborers are few. And so we pray uh, that God will raise up more and more laborers in His harvest field. So, as a parish in the Anglican Church, we don't do missions on our own. We do it in coordination together with the diocese. And so the six countries, 27 parishes, each parish uh, takes at least one country. Some of the larger parishes, like St. John's and Margaret's Church of Our Saviour, uh, they take on more uh, because of their size. For St. Paul's Church, the country that we focus on is Thailand, Thailand. And in your hands, uh, you should have this. If you don't have this A5 sheet, can you raise it? The ushers will give you. So if you don't have this, yeah, Patricia doesn't have. Anybody else doesn't have this A5? Yeah, someone over there, Sachu, Paul Sachu. George, uh, Paul and... Uh, yeah, maybe keep raising your hands until the ushers uh, pass this to you because I think I want to highlight uh, some of the things here. Um, so there are four areas of focus. Uh, first, Reverend So also doesn't have one. Uh, George, Reverend So right here at the front, on my right, uh, on this side. Okay, so missions to Pai, Thailand, began in 1997, no friends? 27 years of sustained efforts. Can we just give the Lord a, a clap? Yeah. And also all the generations uh, of uh, congregations, and many of you here, uh, some of the pioneers here. I know uh, Georgie is our most uh, faithful uh, traveller uh, to Pai. And really, the sustained effort since 1997, 27 years of sustained ministry. Then we have missions to Chiang Mai, more recent, uh, last year, led by the Mandarin congregation, sending youth teams, uh, combined youth team, and working in collaboration with St. James Church. Uh, and there's a team that's going up in December, the team from Pi just came back, and we will, we will be sharing. The team from Pi will be sharing uh, next week on our mission trip. Now, so the first two is the work with Thailand. But you know, friends, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. The nations there is never in Scripture talking about nation state. We're very used to nation state, huh? state of Singapore and things like that. But the word there is ethnic, ethnic. It's, it's the root word is ethnic, the people group, the race, the tribal group. And, and so we in Singapore have the nations here, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, they are here working in this land. And so three and four is the work that we do to reach the nations who are here. The injured migrant workers uh, began at, at uh, Little India, and then uh, the migrant workers in the dormitories. Init initially, it's been enticing. Now, because of uh, COVID, there's a shift, and the uh, Anglican Church has a medical center in Panjuru, and the Tamil congregation is looking, in Indian congregation is looking into the work there. And uh, we have... a. Uh, PowerPoint slideshow, it's not really a video, we start small, eh? maybe next year we'll come up with a video, but I think we, instead of me talking through the plans, uh, we have a video, uh, a, a PowerPoint slideshow, eh? I would say, that gives the overview, we can show that now. We who rejoice to know thee renew before thy throne the solemn pledge we owe thee to go and make thee known. Let's stand. 
Yes, hope that, I hope that gives you a good overview of uh, the work in the four areas. But as you look again at your A5 sheet, eh, we have listed there the opportunities and press. It was in the PowerPoint slides, but we put it here and put it in your hands so that you can see the opportunities available in these areas. And you can also speak to the people in charge of the different areas. So like Pastor Leon for Pai, Reverend Chu for Chiang Mai and so forth. Rodney for missions to injured migrant workers and Reverend Ezra. Overall, we have the missions committee chaired by Shin Yong, uh, together with the team. Uh, but the numbers are there, the email addresses are there. So if you're interested, like uh, Pi, there's a team that goes to do leadership training in April, and another team that does community outreach uh, and um, baptisms and all that in October. Uh, and so if you are interested, please uh, speak to uh, Pastor Leon, uh, Shin Yong, myself, and also for the other areas. And also there are the prayer pointers there. So begin uh, uniting in prayer for the work uh, that St. Paul's Church, we as a parish together, is doing in obedience to the Great Commission. During Missions Month, we focus also our preaching on the, uh, the gospel, of, on the proclamation of the gospel. So we can have the slide up. So today is the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel text that was read, Matthew 24. But I just thought I'd also share the, the topics that are coming up uh, in this month. So next week, uh, Pastor Leon will be here to preach on the gospel of the Great Commission and then gospel of reconciliation and the gospel of salvation. And we pray God will, by His Holy Spirit, stir our hearts to this call, His last command, but our first concern, to bring this gospel to those who need it. And I think the songs that the worship team sang were so appropriate. Our God saves. He saved us, and now He calls us to be His vessels, to bring his good news to others. So, gospel of the kingdom. Now, Matthew 24 is the passage that was read, but when we look at uh, the gospel uh, of Matthew, it actually begins with this, as the theme of Jesus' preaching. So, right there in Matthew 4, it says, And Jesus, when he went through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. So, it's there mentioned. In Matthew 4, and of course, as we come to Missions Month and the text that was read that we'll be focusing on today, towards the end of Matthew's Gospel, as Jesus speaks about the end of this age, he says, and this Gospel of the Kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So I want to unpack for us gospel of the kingdom. So there are two words there, right? Gospel and kingdom. Gospel, as we all know, is good news. Good news. Evangelion. Good news. It's not just a New Testament term. It's there in the Old Testament because the Old Testament is all pointing to the Messiah, to Jesus, to Jesus who saves, Jesus our Savior, our God saves and, and so, particularly in Isaiah 52, we, we have this. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. So twice here, right? Brings good news. 
this is the good news. The good news that God saves through Jesus, through His work at the cross. And it's all, that is the good news. But what is about the kingdom? The kingdom is actually the last three words here, you know. Your God reigns. Your God reigns. We always think of, tend to think about kingdom in geographical terms. But when the Bible speaks about the kingdom of God, it's speaking about the rule of God, the reign of God. And so, Jesus comes and He has brought in the kingdom. And we pray, Thy kingdom come. That God, in the Lord's Prayer, right? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come. We are praying for God's rule and reign in the hearts and lives of people. So when you think about the kingdom of God, we're thinking about the rule and reign of God. What is the opposite of kingdom of God? It's not the rule of God, it is the rule of Satan. If it's the kingdom of not the kingdom of God, the opposite of the kingdom of God is the kingdom of this world. Because who is ruling the world now that God has allowed? this world to be ruled for a period of time. Satan, he's ruling. So there is a contest between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. And I want to just highlight this contrast because when we're thinking about the gospel of the kingdom, we need to have a deeper understanding of this kingdom and our path and our role that we need to play in bringing in the kingdom of God. So. Just some comparisons. Huh? So, ruler is God in the God's kingdom. The ruler of this world is Satan. And the kingdom of this world is marked by evil, um, self-centeredness, sexual immorality, uh, jealousy, pride, and everything else. The kingdom of God is marked by love, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Then another comparison is we are all born into this world, this world of, of sin. We are born with a sinful nature, this Adamic nature within us, from the first Adam. But we are born again by the Spirit into the kingdom of God. As we think about Nicodemus and Jesus' words to him, you must be born again. Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God, he tells him first. Then he says, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And for us who have experienced the transforming power of the Holy Spirit, as we believe, put our faith in Jesus, we are born again into the kingdom. The kingdom of the world, yeah, when we were in the kingdom of the world, we live according to the pattern of this world. But we are called to live in accordance with God's kingdom. And we often find this tension in our lives. Because Satan is still ruling. So we are often tempted to live according to the pattern of this world. Power, status, greed, materialism. But in Matthew's gospel, especially in the Sermon on the Mount, right? Jesus espoused the values of the kingdom. Love your enemy as yourself. It's transformational. It's living according to di different values. Counter, it's counter-cultural to the way in which this world operates. That's the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of this world will be destroyed. God has, in this season, allowed for this time where Satan is ruling, but Jesus is coming again. And so that's why I chose that text which uh, Rita read. If I can just highlight one verse in 1 Corinthians uh, 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse uh, 24. Verse 24, it says, Then comes the end when He, Jesus, it says, delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. I must confess, I, I never reflected much on this verse in verse 24, that when Jesus comes, 
the first fruits of the resurrection, and we all receive our resurrected body, then it says, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom, the rule, you know, the, the full reign of God after destroying every rule and every authority and, and power. When Satan is thrown into the burning lake of fire and the kingdom comes in all its fullness. And so, friends, there is this comparison between the kingdom of the world and the kingdom of God. An important understanding we need to have about the kingdom of God, and especially as you're thinking about proclaiming the gospel of this kingdom, is to understand something known as the kingdom of God is already, but not yet. The kingdom of God is already, but not yet. So the, un the understanding is this, that in the first coming, Jesus ushered in the kingdom. The kingdom has come, right? That's why John the Baptist says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus ushers in the kingdom. But the kingdom is, of the world is still operating and it will continue to operate until Christ comes again. And then the kingdom of God will be in its fullness. So we are in this in-between period where Satan is rule of the world. I put the text there. I have no time to go through it in terms of God saying to, uh, allowing Satan to be the prince of this world, the ruler of this world. But it's operating at the same time as the, in, uh, the establishment of the church has God's agent to bring in the kingdom, to live out the kingdom, to be the salt and light, and to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. And so, this understanding is absolutely crucial because in the text that we read from Matthew 24, it's not an easy passage. I read from 15 to 28, actually the whole chapter needs to be taken together, but the issue is the disciples did not understand this. And that's why when they were leaving the temple in the beginning of Matthew 24, the disciples were pointing to how magnificent the temple was. And what did Jesus say? Not one stone is going to be left. Everything is going to be destroyed. It's like someone saying, St. Paul's church is going to be totally destroyed. That's shock, right? And the next question is, when is this going to happen? In their minds, this is the end. And, and to them, the, when the Messiah comes, things will come to an end. This separation of the first and second coming is something that the disciples then, when Jesus spoke to them, they did not understand. But it is crucial for us today to, to know this, to know that we are in a battle. That's why in baptism is fight uh, valiantly against the world, the flesh, and the devil because of this contest. Because the kingdom has come with Jesus, but it only comes in its fullness when Christ comes again. But we have the Holy Spirit who is with us that we battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And, and so this is something that the disciples did not understand, and that's why they asked him, tell us when these things, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So they're already looking at the end. And Jesus then teaches them two things. Don't speculate, which is still very relevant for us, as especially when you study this chapter or Revelations. We want to speculate and have a chart, you know, a sequence of when is the tribulation, when is the rapture, and things like that. Don't speculate. And don't be deceived. False Christ will come. And then in Matthew 24, he speaks about something that will happen in the near term and something that will happen in the end. 
for the, for, for the disciples at that time. The first is the actual destruction of the temple. Jesus spoke those words in, in Matthew 24 around AD 32, AD 33, very close to his crucifixion. But we know from history that the t Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70, AD 70, correct? Within the lifetime of, of most of the disciples, right? And so it did happen. But within the passage where it says, let those who are on the rooftop flee, those who are pregnant and things like that, that pray that it doesn't happen in winter, all that is, is referring both to the calamity that was going to come in the near term in AD 70, but also the great tribulation before Christ comes again at the end of the age. So you just need to remember that these are two events, what is going to happen in AD 70, what's going to happen at the end. And he says, there are warning signs, there are warning signals. They are asking for the sign, but he says there are lights that will point towards the end, but it's going to happen in each generation of, hi of history. Each generation of the church will experience these warning signs. What are these warning signs? Wars and rumors of wars will continue. Now it's uh, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, and others. Nation will rise, ethnic wars happening regularly throughout history, famines, earthquakes. Church will be hated, persecution of the church in various countries. False Christ and false prophets, don't be deceived. But you know, there's one that we sometimes don't put under warning sign, which is absolutely important for us in the church. It's the proclamation of the gospel of the kingdom. Friends, this is a warning sign, and this is the key warning sign. So, Matthew 24, verse 14, what does Jesus say? And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world, has the testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. This is the warning sign that we, as a church, need to pay attention to and see our role in hastening the coming of the kingdom of God. How are we to respond? Scripture is very clear. Be alert, be vigilant. Christ is going to come at any time like a thief in the night. So be ready and live out God's kingdom. We as the church, we need to be the salt and light so that people will see Christ in us and be drawn to Him. That's why uh, 2 Peter, it says, since all these things are to, thus to be dissolved, this world kingdom is going to end. What sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? So live pure lives. Be the salt and light drawing people to Christ. But the second one is what I want to focus on, especially on Missions Month. The call for us to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Of course, if we just proclaim without living holy and pure lives, we'll be hypocrites. So it goes together. Live out the kingdom and proclaim the kingdom. That's our response. To proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. You know... John Piper calls this the great promise. Next week, Matthew 28, uh, Great Commission, uh, is the great purpose. But this, my friends, is God's promise. Uh, John Piper goes on to say, it doesn't say the gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed or the gospel of the kingdom might be proclaimed. It's saying the gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed. Who is saying this? Jesus, God, God has promised this is the great assurance in missions. And whether we respond or not, God will accomplish it. It's whether we are willing to be obedient, to participate in God's mission, my friends. 
History is not just random events happening. God is on the throne. God is sovereign. God will bring about His purposes in human history. And this gospel will be proclaimed. Whether you or I are obedient, because He, if we don't rise up, He will call someone to rise up to fulfill His eternal plan and purpose. Because our God reigns. Our God saves. Lauren Cunningham, the founder of YWAM, uh, has shared, uh, he's already gone home to be the Lord, but he's shared how the spread of the gospel ties in with church history. I've shared this, I think, on previous missions month, but it bears a repeating. So there's the, this is what he shares. This is the map of the world. Right there in the middle is the Middle East. That's where the gospel started. I mean, Jesus ushered in the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, there in the Middle East. Did the gospel go east or west? The gospel went west. How did the gospel go west? Paul's missionary journey. We are St. Paul's, right? We need to know Paul's missionary journey. So, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Acts 16. Eh? Acts 16. Acts 16, verse 7. Acts 16, verse 7. And when they had come up to Mycenae, they, Paul and those who were with him, they attempted to go into Bithynia, which is east. But what does the text tell us? But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. The Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go east. Then Paul has a vision, and in verse 9, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and save us. Macedonia is ancient Greece. And so the gospel is taken west. Of course, there's Thomas and all going to India, but I'm looking at the primary, uh, Lauren Cunningham's perspective, which I find helpful. He's looking at the primary move of the gospel. Okay? Mark then goes to Africa. And then what you have next in history is you have Christopher Columbus sailing to find Asia but finds America. You have the Europeans going over and you have Christianity taking root in North America. And then you have in the 1800s and 1900s European missionaries coming to Southeast Asia to China. Right? When you look at Singapore's history, yeah, you look at the, the British and also the Roman Catholic uh, missionaries from Portugal and Spain. That's how the gospel came to this part of the world. What's left, my friends? It's back. Back to where it all began. You know, the, I heard the fastest growing church used to be Nigeria. Now it's Iran. I'm not sure if it is still Iran. Yeah, but if God has pro promised, and this gospel will be proclaimed throughout the whole world, and then the end is, will come. Friends, we are living at the very end of human history. We don't speculate, but this is God's promise. And the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. That is how it started. Twelve disciples, one betrayed him. But the, the gospel from an insignificant beginning has grown to become a huge tree from a small mustard seed. Friends, we don't speculate about the end, but what is our priority? There's the kingdom of the world, there's the kingdom of God, and it's in conflict. Sometimes we have one foot in the world and one foot in God. Today, as we launch Missions Month, I want us to choose the kingdom of God. That's the first thing we need to do. Scripture says, seek first the 
kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. So there's a tension. Satan is ruling this world, the kingdom of this world. The kingdom of God has come but not in its fullness. It's already but not yet. And we are in a fight. We are in a battle. But God has given us the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the, the earth. He's empowered us. Choose the kingdom and live in accordance with God's kingdom. Live the, the kingdom values to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love the migrant worker, to love the nations, and to be his vessel to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. It calls for response. It calls for us responding to the stirring in our hearts, to missions, to serving Him and proclaim this glorious gospel of the kingdom. So I pray this A5 sheet will not land so quickly in the wastebasket, but that you will take it and see. As a member of St. Paul's Church, how can you participate together with the body of Christ to bring in the kingdom of God. Would you bow your hearts with me in prayer? Gracious God and Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his love for us. We thank you that he has ushered in the kingdom. Help us, Lord, as we battle against the flesh, and the world, and the devil. Help us to stand on your promises. And help us, Lord, to be faithful to your call to us, to be your witnesses. Thank you for your promise that this gospel will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to the nations. And then the end will come. Help us, Lord, to sense the urgency of the times, not to speculate about your return, but that, Lord, we will respond to be your sent ones to go forth into the nations and proclaim the good news of the gospel. Help us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Shall we stand as we respond? the song
God's righteousness Knowing His kingdom reigns and rules In the same spirit Let us now say the nice and trick together we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. We, the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, a very good morning to everyone. Good morning. Please turn to your left and right. If there's anyone new or the first time here, nobody? It's okay. Then say hi to each other and say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right, okay. And um, this morning's announcement will be, uh, please stand by your handphone. This is the first time, right? Uh, every time we tell you, please keep your handphone switched off. But now I'm telling you, please prepare your handphone. It's something exciting going to happen right now. Okay, for the announcement this morning, I'm going to announce on the Gape night. Okay? So please... Prepare your handphone again. Agape night is on 14 December 2024. If any holiday plans, please make sure you do it before or after, not on that day, right? We need you all to be here on 14 December, okay? The program will be from 4 to 9 p.m. Please invite whoever you know, huh? Your family members, it's a good time to bring your family members, relatives, and also your friends. And if you can, please invite your next door neighbor. Usually, that's the most difficult to preach the gospel. So, invite them on this day, okay? And the next slide will be Pastor Lazarus. He'll be the one who'll be speaking, he'll be the one bringing the good news to us, okay? Please come and see and hear about his life testimony and how he came to Christ. I'm not going to share, and I'm not going to share too much of it, but I tell you, it is amazing. Try jumping down from the second floor. I think definitely you're bound to be injured. But this man survives, but not from second floor. Let him speak to you all. Okay? And uh, the third slide will be, maybe because of the agape night, we will be also asking donations. If any one of you all are willing to donate, please Come freely and donate, okay? The person that we contact will be Pastor Leon or Yingyi or myself, okay? And uh, if you look, you know how to contribute through pay now, internet banking, check, or cash, okay? And the next slide will be, now, this is the most important moment. Please take out your mobile phone, okay? And please scan. Uh, those who never scan, never mind. I'm going to scan you all now. Right, please scan the QR code. I'm going to give you all a okay, good 45 seconds. Okay, so once you scan this thing, and then please later go into the link. Okay, and then please fill in your particulars. Okay, invite, and then if you are going to invite your friends, please also sign in for them.
can. Okay, and this is for Agape. And uh, the next, we're going to prepare our heart. We're going to call our intercessor, Brother Arul, to come and lead us into prayer. Church, let us pray. Thank you, Father. You are the light of the world. You are a lamp to our feet, light to our path, and we no longer walk in darkness because of you. So, Father, help us to reflect your truth in our lives. Point others to you and bring glory to your name. And give us the strength and courage to share this hope that we have in you. We thank you, Father, for today's message. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for the work of St. Paul's in Thailand and all, the other, and all the other places that the Anglican Diocese has mission work in. Father, help us, Lord. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers are still few, Lord. So, Father, help us to be part and apply ourselves to the harvest, be it to the mission field of countries or to the migrant workers or to other countries, or whatever feels local and overseas as well, Lord, show us how we can apply ourselves to this to bring forward and extend your kingdom, Father, and continue to apply ourselves to be ambassadors in our community, shining the light of Christ to Coven region and beyond. We continue to pray for Archbishop Titus Chung and his family. We pray for our vicar, Reverend Jeremy and Yi Ping and the family. Keep them safe and in good health. We continue and pray that you will preserve the health and safety of Reverend Chu, Reverend Ezra, all the pastoral staff and their families, Lord. And we pray, O oh Father, for the outreach activities in St. Paul's Church towards the end of the year. We especially pray that many will come for Agape Night on 14 December and you will touch all who attend the event. Many will turn to you through the message and the activities. We pray for the coming Angel Tree Project, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for those volunteers who will be taking part to deliver the gift vouchers to the families of those who are in prison. We pray and ask for your hand to be upon the volunteers as they deliver the cards and upon the recipients that their hearts will be turned towards reconciling and reuniting with their loved ones after they serve their sentences. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for nations now that go through in turmoil. You are the true King and we ask for your mercy on the people who suffer the ravages of war. We pray for the numerous battlefields out in the world today. Is, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Hamas, Myanmar, numerous other battlefields and skirmishes, too numerous to, to name, but Lord, you know the suffering, you know the grief, you know the loss, Father. We pray for the speedy release of hostages. We grieve with the families of those who have lost loved ones in these tragedies. We pray especially, Father, you silence the warmongers, scatter the bloodthirsty, shatter weapons of war, take pity on the vulnerable, so that true peace and justice may be restored to these lands. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our government and its leaders. We pray for our President, Tarman Chanmogratnam, Prime Minister Lawrence Wong, Deputy Prime Ministers Gan Kim Yong, Heng Sui Kiet, and other cabinet members and other members of parliament. We pray for righteousness, justice, and fairness to guide them as they make the decisions necessary for daily governance of our nation. We pray that policies and legislations will be put in place that promote virtue, curb excess, remove and restrain vice, promote fairness and equity throughout the land. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your hand to be upon all who will have travel plans and holiday plans in this coming months of the year. We pray that wherever they are, keep them safe and in good health, protect them from harm, and bring them safely back home from wherever they go to. 
We now ask for your hand upon all who are unwell and for your healing touch upon them, your presence upon their families and their loved ones, especially among their caregivers and those who have yet to know you. We bring before you Linda Milner, Lynette Sia, David Lowe, Ellen Ichai, Jonathan Kasim, Mrs. Raman, many others who are known to us and many others who are unknown to us, but who are definitely known to you. Father, hear the cries of those who are in pain and illness. Bind up the brokenhearted, hear the needy. Preserve our lives and our, keep us in good health. Heal us and be near to us during these days. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Father, graciously hear these prayers and accept them in the name of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Shall we stand as we share the peace with one another? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We share the peace with one another. Father, we thank you for your call upon our life. Thank you for the gift of salvation. May we, Lord, be ever grateful for so great a salvation that, Lord, we may be bearers and heralds of this good news of the kingdom of God and that we will proclaim it and that, Lord, through our lives and our testimony, we will draw many to know you and to love you. For we ask this in Christ's name. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Christ. Amen. We now have the closing song led by the choir.
the service has ended. Please continue fellowship at the parish hall. And uh, those who want prayers, who need prayers, please come. We are here to pray for you all.